Isn't the gospel amazing? I love the doctrine of covenants. and I love God's plan. He just has built it out over the centuries with all these prophets. And in our day, we get to see how it all is flourishing and being brought to pass. Let's return to verse 49, 50, and 51. Now remember that the righteous that lived in this land before, in the Americas, prayed to have the gospel go forth. And here's what they said. Now this is not all. Their faith in their prayers was that this gospel should be made known also, if it were possible, that other nations should possess this land. So there are many nations now possessing the Americas. And thus, they did leave a blessing. Now again, these are the righteous prophets who lived in the ancient Americas. They did leave a blessing upon this land in their prayers that whosoever should believe in this gospel, in this land, might have eternal life. The Book of Mormon came forth to share that gospel. So anybody in the Americas and anybody in the world who believes the gospel as revealed in the Book of Mormon can have eternal life. Verse 51, very interesting. Yea, that it, the land, might be free unto all of whatsoever nation, kindred, tongue, or people they may be. Notice, it doesn't say the Book of Mormon will come forth in a free land. It says, if you believe the gospel, it might be free unto the people who believe the gospel. So if you want freedom, you live the gospel. You don't wait for freedom to bring forth the gospel. The gospel brings forth freedom. And again, this is important. Verse 51 says that the land might be free unto all of whatsoever nation, kindred, tongue, or people they may be, if, back in verse 50, they believe in the gospel. So when we want freedom in this life, we have to trust God. We have to accept the gospel as revealed, and we have to live it. We can't simply claim, I have it, I'm part of the church, therefore I should get all these blessings. You actually have to do something. We have to live the gospel, and then we will be free. So to finish up section 10, let's go back to verse 63 for a second. This I do, that I may establish my gospel, that there may not be so much contention we live in a world where people are fighting over all kinds of things, all kinds of ideologies and approaches to, to politics and life in general. Notice he says, Satan doth stir up the hearts of the people to contention concerning the points of my doctrine. And in those, these things they do err, for they do rest the scriptures and do not understand them. Uh, one of the things that he's revealing here is, the same doctrine that he taught the Nephites when he first arrived in the Americas. Don't contend. He says, if you contend, you're, you're giving in to the temptations of the devil because he is the father of contention. That's not of me. Notice he then says, I'm going to unfold unto them this great mystery. Verse 65, for behold, I will gather them as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings if they will not harden their hearts. Yea, if they will come, they may, and partake of the waters of life freely. I love that. His message of the gospel is this open invitation, these raised wings that you can come and gather underneath his wings for protection. It's free. It's open to all. Nobody's denied. And uh, he tells you that is his doctrine. Now, on to section 11. When Samuel Smith had come down from Manchester, New York, down to Harmony with Oliver Cowdery, shortly thereafter, Joseph and Oliver had been visited by John the Baptist and received the Aaronic Priesthood, the ability to baptize. Samuel had been baptized by Oliver. He goes home to, to Manchester up by Palmyra, and he shares with the family this, this great news. Well, Hiram Smith, the now the oldest brother in the family, because Alvin passed away, he died back in 1823. Now Alvin's, or now Hiram says, I want to go down, so he left immediately to go down to Harmony 
and he shows up uh, late in May of 1829. And he is excited to assist in the work and to do whatever he can. Now you'll notice in chapter or section 11 that verse 1 through 9 are basically with a couple of punctuation mark changes and a few words, two words here or there changed. It's the identical copy to section 6, verse 1 through 9, which was given to Oliver Cowdery. So the Lord is using very, very similar, almost identical words to Hiram. But Hiram gets some additional stuff that is relevant and applicable only to Hiram, not to Oliver uh, in that context. So notice there's a, th there's a thread here that flows through section 11. Look at, we'll pick it up in verse 6. Now as you have asked, Hiram, you've asked, what can I do to help? What can I do to build up the kingdom? Here's the answer. I say unto you, keep my commandments and seek to bring forth and establish the cause of Zion. Seek not for riches, but for wisdom. Don't try to get rich, but try to gain wisdom. Notice verse 9. Say nothing but repentance unto this generation. Keep my commandments and assist to bring forth my work according to my commandments, and you shall be blessed. Go down to verse 18. Keep my commandments. Hold your place, or hold your peace. Appeal unto my spirit. Look at verse 20. Behold, this is your work, to keep my commandments, yea, with all your might, mind, and strength. Four times, Hiram is told, keep my commandments. We live in a world that wants things uh, resolved very quickly, wants things given to us. We don't like pain. We don't like long process drawn out. Um, we like what might be termed cheap grace. You'll notice the words of Jesus, not just in the New Testament, but throughout the Doctrine and Covenants, are very focused on this long process of covenant discipleship and loyalty to him. And how do we show that loyalty? Taylor's talked about this multiple times. That loyalty from our perspective to keep that part of the covenant is through doing the things that have been given to us, those, those contractual agreements called commandments. And here Hiram is told that four times. That is your work. And then he follows it up in 21. Seek not to declare my word, but first seek to obtain my word. Then shall your tongue be loosed. Then if you desire, you shall have my spirit and my word, yea, the power of God, under the convincing of men. I like this. Because it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you live in the world, which country or which part of the world you're in. It doesn't matter what gender, what age, what socioeconomic status you have. It doesn't matter what your physical limitations or abilities may be. Every single one of us, without exception, can seek to bring forth and establish the cause of Zion better today than we did yesterday. And we can seek to keep his commandments with all of our heart or with all of our might, mind, and strength better than we did yesterday. This is very doable. And in the process, we are allowing the Lord to shape us through the keeping of those commandments by swallowing up my will in his will, saying, not my will, but thine be done. It allows him to put us in situations and to shape us and to hone us down to the point where we can be used as an instrument in his hands to accomplish his purposes as he does his work. And his work is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of, of all of us and building this Zion, which is oneness and unity in this collective group. Look in verse 26. Therefore, treasure up into in your heart until the time which is in my wisdom that you shall go forth. And that's going to probably be different for all of us, and it's not going to look the same. But if we treasure up in our heart all those things that God has given us, he will call us to do his work. And uh, we'll do it his way. And then he finishes verse 28. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God. I am the life and the light of the world. And he gives us that power to go and do his work. If you look around you and you see efforts to thwart your progress on the covenant path, if you feel great opposition or great temptation, recognize that's what the devil has always done against God's work and against God's children. He's always been that adversary against us. Uh, but in closing, uh, I want to say there is nothing that earth and hell combined can do to thwart the power and the glory and the knowledge and the love and the wisdom of God. This is his work and it will move forward. Brothers and sisters, the work of God will move forward with or without me. But I won't move forward without him. May the Lord bless all of us to seek to bring forth and establish Zion, to, to establish his kingdom, not just in the world, but in your own little world. Know that he lives and know that he loves you. And we leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.